Hello, everybody. I'm here with Unitree. This is a group of individuals I met uh, through Jim Gale and Food Forest Abundance doing great things for truth, freedom, decentralization, voluntary solutions, which is why I like to showcase it to everybody here, um, because the, I'm actually doing a project in Central West Florida where I'm trying to get land and I'm trying to build a food forest to do a demonstration, to have a site where we can show freedom in action. And part of the problem was questioning, like, how do we get the paperwork up and going? How do we get all the monetarily funds together? How do we get all these systems working? And Unitree has a very unique system of doing this. Now, just for the record, I'm not sponsored to say all this. I, I'm genuinely curious. I want to learn what Unitree is. And this video will hopefully serve as a, a teacher for anybody who's curious in Unitree and what they're all about. Um, the website, I think, is Unitree.Earth. Is that correct? Yes, so yeah, you guys can go to unitree.earth and we're going to try to go step by step into it. Um, again, my project is going to hopefully be maybe an example project for those other projects out there. But this, uh, from what I was told, is meant to be a project for decentralization that's going to help with other projects as well, like just projects all around the world when it comes to freedom. So I want to hear all about it. But before you guys go into it, I just want to get like quickly from each of you, like your journey as to um, how you got involved with truth and freedom and why you created unitry or wanted to get involved with this project um okay i'll go first hi everyone i'm michael <laughs> i'm from south africa um yeah i guess i'm this is the brainchild behind the original concept of unitry and then but we've formed quite a strong team daniel's been yeah my partner in it for a while because yeah, so basically what got me into, I guess, wanting to create Unitree in my path to like basically get involved in the whole freedom movement is basically, I guess, just seeing what's going on in our society at the moment. And I think I've been quite aware from quite a young age, from like let's say around 19, 20 years old, I've been aware about a lot of things going on behind the curtains in our society with regard to like all these like underground organizations and a lot of the um, social engineering and the technology and the food and seeing almost like how, th yeah, I guess things are being purposefully constructed and engineered to keep humanity in a certain place and position so that certain, certain individuals can literally um, be dominating the rest of humanity and it's not for good for the collective well-being of humanity and for the planet and stuff. So then I guess that's been like, since I became aware of that, that's been a bit of my my driving force. And I've also been, yeah, I guess gone quite deep down the rabbit hole when it comes to like my spiritual path and learning from indigenous healers and all that kind of stuff. So it's almost like I feel like I've gone in the spiritual path at the same time, been wanting to see that most of our society is run through technology. How can we use well, basically, how can we use technology to actually help um, is have an impact on what's going on in our society? And that's sort of like, I guess, my main motivation is to see like how, because I feel like that's, I guess, how I can have the biggest impact and help humanity the most and the planet the most is through designing technology tools and systems. And that's also what got me into technology was basically seeing that our whole society is being run through software and systems and things like that. So if I actually want to change the program, it's actually going to be through building new types of systems that can actually help us coordinate yeah. and... Um, and that's why yeah. we're here talking about it because it, it's new technology, right? And it's technology that a lot of people, like even in my network are very like, like I'm new to it. I, I'm still learning about like, mm. what you're talking about. When you mention blockchain and, and crypto and all this stuff, I get like, huh, you know, because there's a billion different types <laughs> of crypto out there and people trying to scam others constantly. And then mm. there's like, yeah, so I, I'm just, you know, we got to be able to go step by step, step by step with this, especially since I have investors and people part of this project who are older of age, who've never even heard of crypto, you know, never even got involved. So, you know, sometimes we need to like really uh, baby steps. And thank you for providing uh, images and attachments for people. I'll have that all in the description for everybody, because that will also help go into detail with all this. But uh, Daniel, if you want to share mm. your story too. Yeah, I'll keep mine a little bit shorter because it kind of ties into and through what Michael was stating. But, you know, um, started in the transportation industry when I was 16 years old, 51 now, um, built and sold quite a few tech companies in the space. 
different verticals. And, you know, about uh, 12, 13 years ago, you know, I started searching for, you know, what is the truth? Who's a human? Who am I? And what am I doing here? Boy, did I run into some neat things along the way. Um, we were going around to communes and regenerative communities trying to figure out, you know, why only two in 10 survived. We came back with the answer that really it was the ability for people within the community to earn a living as well as uh, conflict resolution. And as we were coming up with this, you know, understanding, yeah, I ran into Michael and, you know, what I was trying to do with my thought of 13 communities and 11 countries in order to sustain yourself, truly food production, everything, have the network, trans transportation network in place to make it happen even within, within different countries. Um, you know, I was working in that direction and then realized that what Michael had and what he was working on is the, it's the core, it's the impetus of, of what's needed, you know, in order to change things. And it's the place where I felt that I needed to focus in order to actually achieve what I was looking to accomplish with, with my original goals. So I kind of, you know, I'm not going to say I hung that up, but certainly attached it to and jumped into what um, Unitree is and what it's about and what it's doing. And I haven't looked back and that's been about just uh, two and a half years ago. Very nice. Okay, so let's um, delve into this then. Um, what is Unitree, <laughs> very basically? Um, and how do people typically get started when it comes to working with you guys? Um, before it gets into you know my project as an example, is my project a good example, first of all? Um, is this is my type of project the type of project that you expect uh, a lot of people to reach out to you in regards to um, asking for help? Or what what typically do you guys work on uh, at the moment or uh, with people? Sure. Um, yeah, I guess to start off, what, what is Unitree? I would say Unitree is you're almost like a crowdfunding, let's say, resource raising platform whereby you can raise for regenerative projects. So whereby you can basically, if you've got a project idea, like you want to create a food forest or an eco village or a healing center or anything that's about like helping humanity and the planet, let's say it's based on more, let's say, permaculture design principles is suitable for what we're doing because we basically want to have a specific focus with our platform to bring together the people in the regenerative movement and create and almost like bring together everyone's resources so there's like lots of people with land who don't have like money to develop their land like here in austin we are my friend rachel's land she's got 40 acres and the 20 back acres she wants to do something with it but she doesn't have like they say the capital herself to develop it but she wants something to happen there and right now she does she's not getting any benefit from having that 20 acres of standing there not doing anything right. and at the same time she doesn't necessarily know the right people or have the right networks or even have like know about all the different solutions and ideas like all the technology she could be implementing all the different types of all the different types of architecture or like anything like along those lines so basically what we're looking to do is actually bring together let's say like a whole network of people who've got let's say land available and then there's a lot of like it was like groups of investors who are looking for regenerative projects to invest into so we actually like speaking to we hearing about and speaking to people who know like groups of investors and stuff and then and then for them we can basically almost like also like learn about what they're looking for or we can look to start structuring projects according to what they're looking for based on they say the the other resources we have like access to and stuff and then also bringing on board people who are like work in the regenerative space from like permaculture designers, like organizations like Food Forest Abundance and stuff, to yeah. builders or architects like Bioautonomy and um, yeah, and basically because there's a lot of people with a lot to offer and all these like new types of technologies, we basically like new like ways of growing food. Uh, devices that can make water from the atmosphere. There's sort of like all these types of technologies and stuff we're coming across as well. And then and then there's also like the people in like the woofing movement who right now are just traveling around, not earning any money, 
but they could actually be participating in some sort of new type of economy. And then it's also a way to kind of, I guess, most skilled labor doesn't want to just work for free, but then at the same time, you could, they could now be earning equity in projects through earning tokens. So basically what we're looking to do is bring together, yeah, I guess great build like a large community of people because like we are a blockchain project, but the success of every blockchain project is actually based on the community you're creating around that. So we're basically looking, so we've got the one part of Unitree is like a, a blockchain tokenization exchange and the other part that we're setting up is actually like a social network type thing to actually start to form a bit of like a network and a community and get people who are interested in kind of playing in the space and working on these types of projects to connect with each other and share ideas and resources and yeah, skills and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so basically Unitree in essence is a blockchain tokenization platform, but for regenerative projects. So, and then basically we're setting up a new type of accounting system which tracks contributions by these various, I, I call them actors in the system. So people with land, people with skills, people with money, and then basically everyone can contribute their various resources to projects and you can even then help facilitate funds moving or let's say energy moving through the system so you can like sell your tokens for for fiat currency and then pay somebody else with the fiat currency or somebody can earn tokens yeah we're basically looking to so unitree is a blockchain tokenization platform where we are looking to track contributions so the tokens almost like you almost like see them like a shares and projects so when anybody contributes, so somebody puts in a million dollars of land, we issue them a million dollars worth of tokens to represent that land that they put in. Or if somebody else, let's say, puts some money in, another half a million dollars, whatever it is, they can purchase tokens from us, purchase shares, and then the, that money goes to the project to, to be used to develop the project. Or if somebody else does something like contributes some sort of like sweat equity, you would say, like somebody who does a permaculture design for a project, they could also do that for tokens or a builder comes help building or a group of individuals come and help plant food for us or whatever it is, they can earn equity in the projects that through the tokens, we call them beneficial interest tokens. It's basically because they're basically equivalent to like in a trust, you would have beneficial interest certificates. It's almost like which represents a share of the benefits that's because all the projects that we're doing are held in a trust. And then normally in the trust, you highlight what the beneficiaries are getting from the trust. And then the share of those resources from the trust are normally the percentage of the sh of the resources you're getting is based on the percentage of interest, of interest certificates you are, you are holding. Yeah. So basically the tokens are equivalent to these interest certificates that we're basically creating. And yeah, so basically it allows projects to happen through raising funds from let's say a network of investors and stuff because now we can put have this platform where anybody who's investing into these types of projects can come and read about the business plan and see the photos and see what a project's about and yeah and what the benefit would be for like investing into that like, let's say an ecotourism project or getting involved in investing into an eco village where they could stay or anything or somewhere where they could have some time share or there's like different types of projects that we're looking to put onto the platform and different people will be interested in different things and be interested in investing different amounts into different things so then you can also have like the whole groups of investors and stuff coming and even if it's a group of investors every individual might want to invest into different amounts into different projects Okay. Now, um, Daniel, unless you want to speak, I mean, I, I have a lot of questions. So, cool. <laughs> you, if you want to go first, no, 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 I'll let you go, Corey. Yeah. So, okay. So, it's a fundraiser, fundraising platform. It's like also a network. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, it's a decentralized system that, you know, you can have multiple investors. You don't need to have, like, let's say five, let's say it's 500,000 for land. You want mm, five investors mm. to keep the contract easy. You're saying you can do more than that because it's like a fundraising platform and it all goes into tokens. Um, you know, you can invest, invest in as little as $100 if yeah. you want to. Now, like, 
what's like the the minimum for people to to like sign up to this fundraising platform do they need to put in some money to get on the website is this a website that you have that like lists a bunch of projects or what is yes it? yes we're getting going with this and we're busy like in a pilot phase right now where we're onboarding some pilot projects at the moment because we just basically we've built the system the exchange Mm -hmm. the tokenization platform we've got our private law structures common law structures that we're using and then we are setting up our community we're calling the community our community social network okay uh, and then basically so we're still busy let's say we've got most of the structure there in place and we basically got projects that want to onboard right now so we're basically in the process of helping those projects on board and then yeah, we're not charging any at the moment. We're not charging anybody up front to onboard, but it likely would be different for, let's say they wanted us to do a site visit or something like that. Then, So yeah. are people allowed to just um, list their business plan, you're saying, at the moment? Um, yes. I mean, we, 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 we have like an onboarding process, so we're busy developing at the moment. Okay. So we would go th we could, like we don't want it just to be like a free for all where yeah, there's no that's there's no why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we basically are working out like an onboarding process. Okay. For like basically how we vet the projects, are they like how is the land held, how much debt is on it, like almost like seeing if the project plan makes sense, all that kind of stuff, because we want to basically build a good reputation for what we're sure. doing. And we want basically anybody who invests into a project on our platform to know that we've kind of vetted these projects and mm. we put them through almost, almost, almost like, a, like a due diligence process. Mm -hmm. And that we want to and, want to create a space of interoperability where everybody gets along and is working collaboratively in the same direction. OK, yeah. OK, so um, you've mentioned to me uh, that the blockchain, I, I want to mention this before we move on to like my project as an example and such, and mm. then kind of bring this step by step. You mentioned to me that you are in touch with people from all around the world, like in other countries. You want mm -hmm. to explain like some of the uh, the projects and people that you may have got in touch with, if you're allowed to publicly share, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, just share like uh, different people you've networked with and people you're already getting involved with. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, when I mentioned that, I mentioned that our team is kind of spread globally. We've kind of yeah. got like a team of like 10 or 12 people at the moment who are basically working from different places like South Africa, here in the United States, in Europe, all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, and then also with regards to organizations and projects, we've kind of, yeah, on our website, we've got, let me actually mention a few, look at the... You guys already have people onboarded, technically. We projects? we be, we're busy in the process of onboarding a list okay. of projects. So we've got a few lined up at the moment. So okay. we've got we've just redone our branding for the site, but basically we've got one in the Azores that's busy onboarding. It's called Frequency Village. They are busy. Uh, they've acquired some land. It's on the island of San Miguel. It's basically going to be. Yeah, quite a big project where they actually there's a, a town called Mosteros, but they're actually looking to acquire like half the town's land and actually build this like alchemical village out there. Where is that? It's Sao Miguel in the Azores. It's a Portuguese island. Okay, wow. So All I right. went to go. So I went to go visit him last year and stuff, and I spent about two months over there. And he's yeah, basically looking to start putting his whole project onto our platform and then we're busy in the process of doing a pilot with food forest abundance at gold's landing okay what does he plan to do with you guys um he is basically looking to do what he calls a kins domain it's basically a two and a half acre um like a food forest and an airbnb and he wants to do like an animal processing factory and um like a community supported agriculture system over there, but he wants to use it as like a, yeah, a pilot to understand how our structure works. And we've been in communication with them for like a year and a half already with Food Forest Abundance. Are we Abundance. talking about Jim Gale? Yes, Jim Gale. Okay, yeah. So 
he's got an irrevocable trust and he converted that from an llc originally when he yes. started learning about this stuff and then you guys kind of mm -hmm. came into the picture so is he switching things around again <laughs> Well, he would be. Well, he's gonna put a section of his land into our into our okay. trust structure. So then, so some of the, his trust would then lease a piece of land, let's say like a ninety nine year lease, into a trust which is linked to our system, and then he wants to basically then he would get tokens for the land that he puts into the trust, and then one of his team is actually going to do the design for tokens. And then they will have equity in the project, and then he's got a whole bunch of he's got investors he's speaking to right now, who okay. are looking to actually. So he wants to kind of get the structure worked out. So we're basically just getting approval at the moment from, yeah, one of his partners who's basically the trustee of the land, was basically as to like moving forward with the whole story. But that's why yeah. we, why we were there visiting him was to discuss that and also kind of. I guess because they were part of a big network and mm -hmm. with people with land and the right. whole team of permaculture designers and stuff. So we kind of see them as, yeah, quite it's almost like that's like a partnership that us that we set up before we even built the platform. So yeah. basically, I, I spoke to them because I, I kind of had the idea in my brain and sort of like I worked out how the whole system, but then obviously it's a lot of energy to invest up front into building something like this. So then I reached out to them and I said, well, if I build a system like this, will you guys actually use it? And they were like, yes, this is perfect for us. This will be the perfect system. And this is exactly what the type of thing that we want to be doing. Mm -hmm. So basically, and they're also in talks with like the government of El Salvador and they're also looking at a, yeah, like an agri agricultural tokenization system. So they were, so Food Forest Abundance already even spoken to, yeah. Basically, them about using our system to roll okay. it out on like on like a country level over there. Do you? Okay, so I'm not you know entirely familiar with the blockchain. For people who are totally new to blockchain technology, I kind of want to go into that. Uh, and by the way, Matthew Britt is part of your team, and I think he's part of Food Forest Abundance's team. So I think it was inevitable you guys kind of uh, came together. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we met him through Food Forest Abundance, and then. Okay. Yeah, then he asked to join our team as well. Interesting. So okay. now he's like a bridge between us and them as well. As is it because they, they, they understand the blockchain better than me? And they're like, wow, this is just something that we got to do? <laughs> what was his it, 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 No, it actually is, it is something like along those lines. Jim Gale's already been wanting to build some sort of alternative currency for food for okay. us and stuff. But he just doesn't have the technical expertise to, to pull it off. Sure. So then we, we came along and so he's already been wanting to do something like this. And he's like, Fuck, let's just do it then because. So he already had the vision in his mind. And I've actually had quite a lot, quite a lot of synergy with Jim Gale because he's also been wanting to build this freedom platform. Right. And I had this and I had this concept for building a freedom platform as well. And I kind of sent him like a whole spec for like how it's spec'd out and everything of how this thing could work. And he's like, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So it's kind of like it's almost like there's like a synergy there of some kind. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, so let's get into like the blockchain then. Um, again, before I get into my project. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, the the blockchain for people who don't know what that is and, and and let's remind people that you know there's 2030 and all these agendas people are worried about and cbdc's and central digital banking currencies and cryptocurrencies that the government might introduce and centralized systems of currencies and fiat money and all that a lot of people see as problematic and then they also see that there's a collapse coming of the monetary mm. supply and a lot of people see that crypto might crash with it so how does this relate? Really, like, sure. is this going to survive um, through all those events? Is this, you know, how yeah. do you know all those different answers? <laughs> yeah, and this is a big uh, threat of the food system collapsing as well at the moment. So, Because yeah. you said you, you convert the USDs into USDCs, and this is like a technical, like, blockchain transaction. But if the system goes down, does that go down with it? Yeah, but we're not wanting to keep the the. They say it's the converting into USDC is just to get it to us, so that the money can be invested into projects. Mm -hmm. So if you want to invest into like one of these unitary projects, you would buy the toy and you want to invest currency, then instead of like let's say land or labor or anything else, then you would basically buy USDC on any exchange like Binance or Coinbase or one of those, and then you would then send it to our exchange. We able to will give you like a basically when you create an account you get like an address at like a deposit address 
And then when you send the USDC to the deposit address, then we credit your balance on the exchange, and then you can use that balance to then buy the tokens. But the idea is to not keep the value in USDC. The idea is just to use the USDC just to get the money to the projects sure. so that they can then invest it into like basically real land or materials or labor or, or like what like whatever is needed for the project. And okay. and then we're already also speaking to um yeah, this tribal my friend Rachel who we're visiting here, she's also speak got a group called create this thing called Sovcoin, which is like a gold backed coin held by like uh your know, indigenous people and more okay. in the private and stuff. So we are kind of really talking about like, okay, what if that happens? But for me, if like things collapse, I mean for me I think the most useful thing to have is actually um yeah basically food Who's and the, shelter out, food, the, food and shelter the, and stuff. the alan watts quote the alan watts quote here is probably a good one uh yeah sure. yeah yeah so basically when it comes to this um yeah basically during the i was listening to alan watts talk and he was talking about the great depression okay. and he said during the great depression basically you still had all the same people all the same land all the same factories all the same resources you just didn't have this thing called money Therefore, nothing happened. So they said we're going to depression now. Therefore, nothing happened. And he said that's like builders going to a building site, but they can't build because they run out of inches to measure things with. Mm -hmm. Because all money is, it's a unit of measurement of value contributed to the community. Mm. So basically, with Unitrade, we're, only, we're creating our new, basically our own accounting system. And blockchain is just a ledger to record transactions and it's a ledger that basically everyone can trust because nobody controls it. Basically it runs on, let's say like Bitcoin runs on millions of different computers. So nobody's in, no one's in control. Um, but it has to run on some sort of server or or no? I mean, well it's, well, it's on a server, but it's on millions of servers and everyone's okay. got a, and everyone's got a copy of the database. Okay. And basically, and then basically, how do I so, get a copy of the database? You, you can just run a node. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm I'm a noob to this. I'm just curious. Yeah. So basically, so they call Bitcoin a permissionless system. So basically, okay. you don't have to ask permission to participate, and then you run the Bitcoin like node client, and then that's so it's basically working with the network, and then yeah, basically, so it's decentralized. Nobody's going to control. So it's the it's an antithesis to like centralization of power in our society. It's decentralization of power. And so blockchain provides that decentralization of yeah and you said it's like a growing trend right a lot of projects are heading in that direction so it's like a good yeah idea well to... you're saying the tokenization of yeah there's also a growing trend the whole tokenization of real world assets at the moment mm -hmm. it's like i mean it's like big companies like blackrock and jp morgan and everything want to tokenize everything but they're kind of doing it from my perspective for more, for more like nefarious purposes and stuff right but yeah. it's almost like I feel like that they say the force of the dark and the force of the light. They're trying to, they're basically they're doing this. They meant almost like they're doing the same thing, but with different almost like different right. outcomes. That's, or that's aims. anything, yeah. Technology, anything, any tool could be used for good or evil. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't think people should just fear it altogether. I mean, this is the future, pretty much mm, no matter what. It is. Um, and yeah. So, 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 so just to reca recap quick on the blockchain yeah. thing. So, the, so the so once the decentralization of power, basically running on all these different computers. The other is the immutability. Nobody can change any of the transactions once they've once written in. So it's almost like a permanent record of everything that's happened. And, that's then, it's, and then it's fully transparent, so everyone can read everything going on all the time. That's, so okay, that's very nice. So that's like yeah. the strength. So that's the I want strength this to of be blockchain. transparent, for sure, for my project. Absolutely. One thing I was worried about is like, I, you know, I got a relay between a lot of different people, and I want them to kind of know what's happening. And it's hard to really tell everybody everything all the time. <laughs> and so, and, yep. and by the way, just for the record, I love the all in one type of platform type of idea because that's something I created with the Liberator 2 news. Like I created that platform because I saw it wasn't created in independent media. It has like a networking page, an action page, a learn page. It's like, why doesn't these news websites and independent media have like an action page? And then like it has like a real life, an online networking section, then an activism section, an event section. It's got all this stuff and a live stream section. Like I made it an all in one platform and then anybody can contribute in one way or another, whether they send an article and I turn to a video. It's like all this stuff. So like when I hear about other people doing all in one platforms, I love it. 
because that's exactly what I would do. Like if I were mm. in your shoes and I had your technical knowledge, I'd probably be creating the exact same thing you're creating. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> and, if the, and if somebody probably taught me how this stuff works, I'd probably help you guys develop it. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be programming right <laughs> alongside of us. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I've always been an inventor since a young age. Like I make books and, and games sure. and stuff like sure. that. So like I love this stuff. Well, look at your uh, project. Come on, Corey. Yeah, 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 of course. Project. I'm going to learn a lot through, you know, this project and what we're sure, doing. So, sure. um, but the only thing that can take you guys down then would be like an EMP, right? Or no? <laughs> um, <laughs> because that yeah, takes out all the electronics. Yeah, hmm. true. But I mean, I don't think that the forces who are in control right now want us. They, they hold control that systems. Would, that would be self sabotage, I think, in some degree. Um, well, they just but, invested, 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 they, they've just invested all this money to roll all the 5G and stuff. <laughs> I think they're quite invested in keeping the yeah, good risk. Yeah, I just figured to, to throw that out there. You know, it's, mm, it's good sure. people assess the risk. There's always a risk with something, even if well, it's a really good thing. Well, that's the whole thing with this is that, like they say, everything goes to shit. Then at least you basically planted a shit ton of food. It's sort of like, because right. basically... You got the, the value. The value is still there. You know, you're yeah, still the, able to take the value. It's just not tokenized anymore. Yeah, and you can also do a back a hard copy backup of let's say that who's got how yeah, many tokens well, every every month or whatever. Like didn't that. you say like the value goes up with when you build on the land? Yeah, exactly. What well, I mean, yeah. well, basically, um, firstly, it's kind of a trend right now, like land going, like once like productive land going up in value. So just through, I mean, like my friend Rachel here, she bought her land like three or four years ago for like seven hundred thousand. And now it's worth like 2.2 million or something like that. And I've noticed that in South Africa, South Africa as well, just because of like how much money is being printed and everything. It's like yeah. just causing like hard assets to, and also with population growth and stuff, it's basically causing hard assets to go up quite a lot in value. So it kind of, in a way, it kind of creates a stable store of value and at the same time, an appreciation of value. I'm saying, does like, that change the tokens at all? Does it change your side platform or anything like that? Well, the, well, the whole idea that we want to basically we're working to implement is like basically reappraising the projects over time. So let's say you get like a real estate agent to come and then reappraise the land every six months, then you can actually reappraise the value of the tokens. Okay, interesting. And then at the same time, if you're going to be developing the land, let's say you install a food forest, the value of the food forest from when you install it to when it's fully mature is actually going to increase over time. Okay. Or if you or if you're building some structures and you're developing the project, now as the, as the project as the project is developed, it's going to cost a certain amount to basically create the structures. But at the same time, the value you're getting out of the structures, and at the end, after you've basically built the structures, is going to be higher. Because okay. generally, real estate developers and stuff they're always making like 100% profits on when they do creating developments and stuff. But now instead of like a developer getting all the funds, you're more like crowdfunding it from the community. That's mm -hmm. kind of like our vision. So then everyone benefits. So if like a permaculture designer comes and does the permaculture design for tokens. Once the project's developed, his tokens will might be worth twice as much, mm -hmm. just because the appreciation of the appreciation of value through the project getting developed. So through energy he, exchange, whether or not he wants to 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 spend it or hold on to it. Okay. So um. So like 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 like, like I give you an example. I was speaking to my friend Shane yesterday as well, and he's got a woman who wants to invest. Okay. And right now the land is zoned agricultural, but through what he's once he but she wants to invest to help buy and secure the land, but then he's going to go through like a rezoning process and it's already been approved by the council over there, and then it'll become like buildable land, and just through him doing that, her investment will go up way in value, just because of the rezoning process. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So I want to get into my, but I have one last question. If let's say somebody invests into land, let's say it is my project and I have people who say, hey, I have gold and silver. I want to invest gold and silver into this project. How does that work when it comes to converting to tokens? Is it the same way as converting, you know, fiat to, to USD or whatever? USDC? Well, you, How does it work with gold and silver? We can also do like we have like a payment thing. So you basically with our exchange, how it works is that we are, you can issue tokens to the market and then people can, as I said, transfer USDC to our exchange and then use the USDC to 
uh, purchase the tokens. But then if you are, let's say, contributing other resources, so whether it's land, whether it's labor, materials, so that could be seen as a commodity that they're co contributing, um, you can basically also pay people with tokens. So you can actually go then into the, yeah, basically our exchange and basically issue tokens right. to that person. Gold yeah, and yeah, silver is just, port just portable land. I mean, M Michael can go into that. It's, it's the same yeah. thing. Well, I mean, you would just take the value of the gold or silver, and then we're going to price the token per, um, so let's say it's one US dollar a token, that's $3,000 worth of gold, then you can issue them basically 3,000 tokens. Okay. All right. So um, now when I have to buy land, let's say I got investors that say 500,000 for five acres, let's just throw that out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And I have about five people who are going to supply that that type of cash. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. I want to set up a trust. I want to make sure that that lend is secure. You know, I want to make sure that, you know, it's this is done with the most freedom possible. Um, we're going through a real estate person that we have to talk to to buy the land. Mm -hmm. So how do we approach this real estate person with bringing all these funds together? OK, so just I mean, yeah, I mean, you can basically create like an offer to purchase and create the offer to purchase based on you raising the funds from these investors. And you can basically maybe put in the agreement that you have like 120 days, whatever you want to actually get the resources from the various or 30 days, whatever it is. And then maybe or even pay LOI, like a, letter of intent. Yeah, yeah, create like a even pay maybe a small deposit or something to them to just kind of show that you're serious and then from there you can basically we can activate yeah basically i mean generally what we do is we get someone to fill out a basically we, we call it a holistic context that's going to outline the project so we can understand specifically what you want to do and create and who's involved and okay. all the decision makers and that kind of stuff do you guys so can, have a, like a contract thing that will help us yeah, we basically, it's called a holistic context. So it was like, because like when I went to my permaculture design course, they taught us that basically holistic management, this is the management framework and permaculture design is the design framework, but then those two kind of work hand in hand. So it's almost like in order to create a design for something, you first need to know the context for what, for what you're creating. So we want to activate a trust and write out the schedules and everything and basically put in the framework, but we first need to know the context of your project but yeah it's a questionnaire that we supply to you that you fill out basically the scope and outline of your project so that helps us understand what's involved and what you're looking to do and what resources you want to create and what finances are available and yeah you know, what you're looking to achieve with your project okay. and then and then from there it's like it gives us a better picture so then we can just like help you implement the structures to write the contract to the realtor yeah, well, I mean, that's going to be one thing, but then also activating the trust and all that kind of stuff. Okay, which it's comes sort of after a, or before? Well, the trust is needed for, um, how would I say, the trust is needed to actually start issuing tokens and stuff to raise resources and things. I mean, the offer to the realtor is basically, yeah, I would say there would just be some sort of standard uh, offer to purchase contract. And then, like you'd say, like like similar to how you would do it but if you, you were gonna. Funds. Sorry. You have to show funds usually, though, right? No, normally it's based on the sale of another house or something like that, and you can also do it based on the letter of intent from your investors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can basically collect this letter of intent from all your investors and say we've got five people willing to put in their their amount. We want to just have like 30 days to secure the funds, but like you would say, like I want to have 30 days to be able to, to, to like sell my house or something. Does the letter of intent count as like, oh, this 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 land is now on hold, like it's it's for these people because you know you might have counter offers coming and other people trying to buy the same land. Yeah, but if you basically enter into offer to purchase and basically they accept your offer to purchase based on your conditions, so like I'm put on let's say an offer on a house then it's basically selling another house then they would give me the window to go to sell the other sure. house 
if yeah. I sort of like it's the same type of thing. So you just ask for let's say thirty days it's up to them whether it's like, like, like it's up to them whether they want to accept it or not. Yeah, you're adding you're adding contingencies. It's just a contingency you're adding. Okay. To the purchase makes sense because because if you add, give them offer to purchase and you have the letters of intent from your investors then it should seem like quite a serious and if you can even give them like some sort of deposit from one of the investors so long so long that should make it seem like yeah you have what you need in place to actually in this contract because you know now you're saying you could have more than five people because five people would be easy for buying a like a, a property and then dividing it between those people like the ownership you know, people are looking to have a part share in that land, uh, mm -hmm. at least in my project. And I know if, if there's like 100 people donating to one project, then it's much harder to do. Um, so I'm just some like, have you know, some some have a different purpose or point that they're trying to accomplish, Corey. Some just okay. want to be involved. Some want to actually include their own labor or they have wood and materials that they can push into the project. Some people if they want to put money in and that's their goal is to actually be on the property or to take revenue or share in the property, you know, that, that may be what they're looking to do there. So it's everyone's different. Yeah. And also you're going to, you're going to have like this uh, fundraising stage for like securing the land and you'll have like, maybe like issue more tokens as you're developing the project and stuff okay. to raise, to raise more resources. And, but yeah, the tokenization allows you to almost like, yeah, deal with more people. Because now you don't have like you can just basically make all the tokens available on the platform, make a video like this or something, explain to everyone how it all works, or do like a demo, taking people through through the system and show them how to invest. Then everyone can decide how much they want to invest. Then you can maybe set like a date and time where there's like a cutoff for people to invest yeah. into the whole thing. And yeah, then do you can... you guys kind of have like walk through step by step for people who are investors? We, we're busy in the process of basically putting that sort of stuff together as well at the moment. Okay. Yeah, trying we've... to make it easier and easier. Yeah, I expect yeah, that. Yeah. That can take time. <laughs> um, optimize, optimize. Yeah, yeah, that's a constant process. And and you know, I don't mind working with people in their early stages. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if, especially if I see the potential. Uh, and like I said, the inevitability. Um, so okay, so let's say you got the contract going. You got all the funds you're bringing together okay there's a window period interesting because similarly the guy who is going to inspect the land to see if we can build buildings on it said that we need like a six to nine month period where he can see if the land is suitable to like you know build stuff on uh, this is a, a guy i met at galt's landing as well um he's uh casanoa design group and uh, he does 3d printed oh, buildings so oh, i think oh, 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 oh. Why does he need that much time? Six to nine months. I I think it's just part of the inspection period. <laughs> Is it? Because he needs to also see like permitting and all that. But I know Jim didn't really ask for permission when it comes to permitting. So mm -hmm. we're gonna see what we can do most freedom wise to prevent a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff that as much as possible. Yeah, and also um, with regards to if you let's say you put the land into a trust and stuff and all that, you can also place a lien on the land. And the lien on the land kind of protects the equity. So even if you, let's say, got fined afterwards, you could basically, like, like the. You get paid the, first. The investors get paid first. So then you can basically, yeah. So you guys are like, you guys are like uh, mini lawyers too, part of this uh, network, <laughs> aren't you? Well, because like you're advising your the projects what to do because you want to, them to succeed in your network. Absolutely. That's, yeah, yeah. So that's but, cool. I mean, I mean, it's like yeah. because I was asking Michael the other day, I was like, so aren't you guys getting something out of this like monetarily? <laughs> I was like, you know, what I mean, and he said five percent of whatever is given. Right. So I just mm -hmm. want to make that clear. Is, so let's say someone gives a hundred dollars. Is it five percent of that? Yeah, exactly. Well, they're going to give a thousand then five percent of that. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And that's basically for the law framework for, for the tools. Yeah. Basically, okay. yeah, I mean, basically, if you guys are willing to give advice when it comes to how to do the contracts, that's like an added bonus. I mean, to yeah, me, that's big because I, people are charging a lot of money just for that alone. Yeah, and then basically, yeah, like they're developing the tools. We're going to continue to develop. Then we create this whole network of communities. They go all like support each other. We're going to yeah. have, the, have the network of different partners and professionals Resources. that can help, right. bring in groups of investors, right. 
it's basically our idea is to try and add as much value as possible. But obviously, mm -hmm. we're an organization and we need funds to run. And if you look at organizations like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, they have charged 5%, but they're not providing much value at all no. for projects and stuff. Yeah, no. They're not freedom oriented to me. That's like first and foremost. But also what I'm trying to create is a blueprint for other projects. Mm -hmm. So we're sure. already pretty much aligned. Um, you know, just so you guys know some context, I mean, I, I want to create a demonstration center, an education center. This is not a place for people to live. This is a place to like change the world, just like mm -hmm. Jim is doing where it's like, mm -hmm. he, here's what we're doing. That's exactly what I want to create. Um, and then from there we can perhaps build neighborhoods and stuff like that. Cause a lot of people want that. But the truth is we can't just like, you know, leave society and escape all our problems. We need to face them, bring them to the world. And that's, you know, I'm in one of the fastest growing cities in America, Tampa, mm -hmm. and it's very, really difficult to get things going here. But that's why I know when we get it going, it will be a hot spot um, and it's going to demonstrate to the whole community. So that's that's pretty much the vision, right, is we're going to do probably a gym, a tea house, perhaps, um, and, and grow the food there that could be used for like the tea house and the gym, you know, whatever it's like smoothies or whatever. and um, then we'll have events there all the time. So, mm. you know, those are already three sources of revenue. And then in addition to that, we, we have a mushroom farm idea and portable units. So um, we have multiple layers and we want to integrate perhaps a library within the tea house. This is a lot to do on five acres. Uh, we were looking originally for around 10, but um, we can make it work and we can always expand and do more projects. Right. Um, but this that's just an overview. Oh, sounds so, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, very big, big picture minded, and um, mm. I, I'm curious what resources you guys need from people. Like, are, are there things that you guys need help with at the moment? Because you know, you guys are working on developing a lot of these systems. And since this is a video, and who knows who might be watching it, um, and I know a lot of people in, in the tech fields who are geniuses in what they do. Um, what is, what are you looking for if you guys need any help with anything, or do you guys think you got all the resources and you're just working on bringing them together? Um, no, I mean, we're always open to more support, to more help. I mean, if people want to, let's say, contr contribute financially to what we're doing and help us sort of like, yeah, I mean, like resources to hire developers or do marketing or, you know, develop our systems more would definitely be useful. And then also, yeah, I guess anybody who wants to get involved, who's interested in these sorts of projects, um, who's got different, like, let's say, uh, skills from like a tech perspective, or they have got like audiences that we can communicate through in the regenerative kind of movement and stuff, or in the, let's say the conscious world. And um, yeah, what else? People, I mean, anybody who's sort of like wanting to do a project and stuff is also kind of like, I mean, we're just looking to do these pilot projects right now. So anybody who's got like land available or something like that, who's interested in doing a pilot project with us, those are kind of useful. Or, or, say. And those, yeah, or I mean, something that they want to offer to the network as well. You know, if it's like that we, we work with, we make water or, you know, vertical farming. We've, we've got a lot of different vendor, you know, partners mm -hmm. that have come in and we're looking for them as well. Yeah, we basically, we just like anybody who can contribute resources to what we're doing. So whether they've got land or as Daniel's saying, they've got skills or tools or tech or anything like that. Sort of like mm -hmm. we're looking to build like a, net, a database of resources. And then Love kinda, that. Yeah. I like how you aren't secluded. I know some people might criticize you and say, well, this is, you know, you got to be really clear on what you want and all that. But like, I, I like this because this open minded approach will allow you to expand and see what better options, what better solutions, what works and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's kind of how I operate my uh, news website, because it's like I want everybody to contribute. I want everyone to get involved. You know, that's I don't right. want to shut mm -hmm. anybody out. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's I right. like that. You know, if you're trying to, to be that way. network, that's what you got to do. Mm. Let, let's be free and, and and not put up silos that give roadblocks you know for those or some yeah okay let's deal with it all let's deal with it all as as it's coming so i understand oh. how this works um i think i pretty much have like a, a an understanding now of like mm -hmm. unitry after talking with you several times i'm sorry if you know it takes me some time but well, cool. because, you know, I'm a spokesperson, <laughs> so I can try to help you guys share the message out there. Mm -hmm. And once I get going, I could be like, hey, this is this is Unitree. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. And maybe awesome. I can say we because I'll be a part of you guys. and be like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that keeps happening. That keeps happening, Corey. Don't 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 laugh. That keeps happening. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're growing really quick anymore. I mean, you got a, yeah, you got a pretty big team. Um, but, but yeah, so I think so. Okay. It's a fundraising platform, networking platform, uh, you know, a platform to really provide all the freedom resources um, for people T- into tangible, you know, real world stuff uh, for projects. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I and, like and we have we have teams too. We have service teams on the tech side. Let's put that out there. You know, Michael and I do a lot with development in and around transportation, automation. There's a lot of things, even real estate, camera technology. There's a lot we're we're tied into. We have, you know, 40 developers in six different countries. So we have resources to scale and build this to where we need to take it. Okay. Yeah. If I tell people it's a it's a fundraising platform, I think it's much easier for them to understand. You know, and before mm-hmm. I go into, oh, there's this this uh, token and there's this, 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 this and that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's just because, you know, it's it's under this decentralized system. And there's a lot of tech behind it. And some mm-hmm. people don't want all the itty gritty. You know, some people want want a, an easier way of looking at it. These older folks I, I'm in touch with, too. Perhaps that's an easier way of, of explaining it. You know, it's like it's a fundraiser platform, like you said, these other ones, except there's more to it. And mm-hmm. because of that, um, I think that's like the big selling point. Right. So mm. thank you. Um, cool. If there's anything else you guys want to mention, um, we're almost at the hour mark. So if you want to mention anything else, future projections, what you plan, um, any thing, advice for me in regards to me buying land and anything I have to be careful with or anything like that. <laughs> Starter steps. Would, would Are you guys going to send me perhaps like a, a way to get started for me? Somebody who yeah, sure. puts investors together who yeah, has yeah. a business plan? Yeah, sure. What I'll do is I'll send you that holistic context as a starting point, and I'll also send you a okay. copy of the, of the trust indenture, so you can read through that and get to understand okay. the trust structure and stuff. And then from there, we can like outline your basically from um, yeah, you filling out that holistic context, we can begin to like flesh out your requirements and okay. stuff when it comes to so that's like the starter contract. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, and then you can, and then you can understand what the trust structure is that we're using. Can I share that publicly, the whole contract with people, or is there any personal information I could probably block that part out? Or (laughs) Um, I mean, most people know my project and its goals, but I know if I want to share with you guys, I just, you know, I want to keep things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what we wanted people to do is also we got a private membership association. There's also people to join our private membership association through joining our platform just because we don't want to necessarily, necessarily have this the trust in danger freely floating on the internet but we are open to you sharing it with people in your network and yeah. stuff who are looking to invest into your project sure then they can sort of like if they've got any questions or concerns then that can also be then brought back to us and yeah then the, the whole thing can be amended yeah. Is there a login on your website? Do you guys have like dashboards and all these systems set up basically? Mm, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. All right. Is there anything uh, else? Yeah, that's all for now. You want to kind of overload, right. like overload anybody. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> thank cool, you for your time, Corey. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I appreciate you, you guys. Yeah. Go to unitree.earth, everybody, to check it out and reach yeah, yeah. out. Right. What's what's the, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you guys? Oh uh, well, actually, what's uh, that's that's the one thing I want to mention that before we go is that we're going to be starting with webinars soon. Okay. And then the webinar is going to be the way to kind of get to know who we are, what we're doing, meet us, ask the questions, and that'll be let's say the beginning part of like the funnel for getting involved with Unitree to join the webinar, and then based on that, then we'll give people guidance on. Yeah, basically how to plug in with regards to what we're doing and based on yeah what Very they want to contribute. Doing a webinar would be a good a good step for sure um, for people. And some people are going to prefer this type of format as well. You know, just, sure. <laughs> so we'll it's good to have it in, in many different mm. formats for sure. Get the word out and I'll help you guys as well. Very nice. Awesome. Grateful Great. for that. Yeah, cool, Corey. Awesome. All right, make Thank it a great one. Love to chat to you. Cool, Take man.